Welcome to TSAT. In the last lecture, we have discussed about the measures of national income and uh, growth. Now, let us look at the other most important topic that is inflation. Okay, right now, every economy across the world is experiencing this problem of inflation. In fact, even in India, the inflation, the wholesale price index based inflation is more than 15 percent and the return inflation that is computed using consumer price index is approximately 7 percent. So, that being the reason, you might have come across this term very frequently. Now, let us try to understand the terms related to inflation before going ahead with this uh, topic. So, inflation is simply a phenomena or a general trend in rise in price level. We call this as an inflation. So, when the price of goods and services over a period of time keeps on increasing, the economy is said to experience uh, inflation. Similarly, uh, the phenomena or a general trend in falling prices, a uh, persistent falling prices of goods and services, we call the phenomena as a deflation. So, prices keeps increasing, it is an inflation. Prices keeps decreasing, it is a deflation. Okay. Let me also make it clear with respect to the term called disinflation. Disinflation. So, when I say disinflation, it is okay, different from the word deflation. Do not get confused with deflation and disinflation. Deflation is fall in price level, whereas disinflation is uh, nothing but fall in uh, rate of inflation. Fall in rate of uh, inflation. So, it does mean it is not the prices are falling, but the rate of inflation is coming down. So, whenever the inflation is trying to be, uh, okay, if you are, if the policy actions of the government is resulting in uh, taming down the inflation, then we say the phenomena is a disinflation. Let us say an inflation rate from 10 percent has come down to 9 percent and then has come down to 8 percent. So, this is the rate of inflation. So, prices are rising, but the rate at which prices are rising is decreasing and this phenomenon is what we call disinflation. The other important term that you need to understand is reflation. So, reflation is in fact, you could simply say it is a, a short form of reinflation. So, whenever the prices keeps falling, and any initiative taken by the government and the RBI to reinflate the prices or to contain the phenomenon of inflation, to contain the phenomenon of uh, inflation, okay, that might result in a re increase in prices is simply what we call a reflation. So, why would generally, generally why would prices uh, either rise or why would prices uh, fall? As you are already aware of the fact in a market economy, price is a function of uh, demand and uh, supply. So, whenever the demand increases much more than the supply, let us say the demand of a commodity is much, much more than the supply, then prices tends to increase. At the same time, if the demand may be remaining constant, but imagine there is a huge fall in a supply. Let us say there is a huge fall in supply, even that might rise in the prices. Similarly, when the demand remains constant, let us say imagine the demand has not changed considerably, but there is a tremendous increase in supply. In such case, because of enormous increase in supply, prices might fall. Similarly, okay, supply remains the same, but the, there is a change or fall in uh, demand, even in such case when there is a large fall in demand for a commodity, even that might result in a uh, fall in prices. So, simply speaking, in a market economy, price is a function of demand and supply and it is a change in these variables, demand and supply or what we call the market forces uh, results in change in prices. Now, let us look at this phenomena where there is a less demand for various goods and services. And since the demand for goods and services is less, as a result, the prices are experiencing a fall. Now, let us imagine the government on the RBI is trying to do something to boost the demand in the economy. Generally, what we call this an expansionary policies. So, RBI could go for an expansionary policy or even the government of India or the finance ministry could go for an expansionary policy through stimulus measures called monetary stimulus or fiscal stimulus. And how could RBI go for a monetary stimulus by reducing the interest rates? So, when you reduce the interest rates, what would be the impact upon the demand? When interest rates reduces, the offtake for credit, I mean the loan offtake increases. As a result, the consumption spending, investment spending increases, that boosts the demand. As a result, it increases the demand. What happens to the prices? That keeps going high. Is it that impact of RBI or government of India, which results in boosting prices, okay, to contain the phenomenon of deflation is what we generally refer it as a reflation. So, I guess you are clear with uh, the topic, okay, the concept of inflation, deflation, reflation and uh, disinflation. Now, let us go ahead with uh, the other important term that is uh, stagflation. Stagflation is a combination of uh, two terms that is uh, stagnation and uh, inflation. So, you know the okay, aspect of inflation. What is inflation? It is being clear, but stagnation is a phenomena where the economy, I think many times you might be using this word called stagnated waters. So, when an economy does not experience any considerable change, either okay, there is neither increase in the output nor fall in output. So, if the economic growth has been stagnated, 
generally we happen to combine okay call the phenomenon as tag inflation okay at the same point of time the economy is experiencing rising price of goods and services we call it as a stagflation okay so in fact stagflation okay whenever you experience a stagflation these are the three prominent things you would be noticing so the economy experiences a slight slowdown or simply fall in growth rates at the same time there will be rising unemployment levels and as a result there is a fall in okay so rising unemployment levels at the same time you could also find that there is a increase in prices of goods and services okay so if you come across any economy experiencing these three okay factors at the same point of time the economy could be considered as an economy experience in the phenomenon of stagflation so i think now you are clear with inflation deflation reflation disinflation and stagflation now let's look at the other terms related to inflation so here in this case okay i have simply different terms like creeping inflation okay and then you have these terms called trotting trotting inflation walking running galloping you could call it okay other types of inflation like hyperinflation runaway inflation so in all the cases i just want to convey the fact the economy is experiencing inflation you know why do people use these terms called creeping trotting galloping hyper runaway is to let you understand the rate at which the inflation is rising so a very huge rise in prices of goods and services in a very short span of time we use the term something like these are something adjectives that let you understand how worse the situation is okay like a crawling baby walking baby running baby similarly if the trend okay if the trend line or the price line keeps on okay experiencing a huge rise in a very short span of time we happen to coin different terms to express the phenomena that is another thing than okay inflation so that's what's the difference between creeping trotting in all the cases there is inflation but these terms indicate or connote that there is a rapid increase in prices in a very short span of time okay so now let's look at the other okay the types of inflation based upon what causes the inflation generally based upon the reasons that cause inflation we happen to okay categorize inflation to three different types one is the very common type of inflation what we call as a demand pull inflation demand pull inflation so what do you mean by demand pull inflation okay in the previous slide i already happened to tell you that the rise in price level could be increase in demand okay consider compared to the change in supply if the change in demand is more than compared to the change in supply so that particular rise in demand might increase in prices of goods and services in fact demand pull inflation could be defined as a very simple phenomena wherein too much money chasing too much of money chasing too few goods too much of money chasing too few goods like say everyone has a good job okay decent job making huge amount of income and everyone want to have a comfortable life running after a large number of goods and services and if these goods and services in the market are not enough to meet the demand of the market in such case prices tends to rise and such kind of inflation is what we call demand pull inflation and this kind of inflation is very common in any economy experiencing growth so if an economy experiences growth it is bound to experience the phenomenon of rise in price level that is none other than the demand pull inflation so growth brings in inflation and that inflation is what we call demand pull inflation the second common type of inflation is cost push inflation in fact most of the economies across the world right now is experiencing that is what we call cost push inflation the reason why most of economies these days experience inflation is not just because of increase in demand it is mostly because of fall in supply okay and that's the reason cost push inflation is also very commonly referred as a supply shock inflation supply shock inflation and the third type of inflation is what is called built in inflation or what you also could call it as a structural inflation so when i say structural inflation okay imagine any deficiency or any constraint in the structure economic structure maybe infrastructure problems the way you produce goods and services the way you distribute goods and services or let me give a very simple example don't you really think a bad roads increase the transportation cost because it increases the fuel consumption isn't it and lack of connectivity proper connectivity between different parts of the country isn't it might also increase in the various price of goods and services because transportation costs of goods and services raw materials everything increases so the way we operate things the way we manage things the way we distribute things the way we produce things all much results in a increase in prices and such inflation because of structural constraint is what we call a built in inflation or structural inflation i guess it's been clear with respect to the different types of inflation based upon what causes and the rates of inflation okay now let's look at what kind of inflation economy would have okay i mean what kind of impact an inflation would have on economy generally in the previous slide i already happened to tell you that any economy experiencing growth let's say the bulging economy experiencing growth is above, okay going to bring in inflation 
because when I say the economy is experiencing growth, what do you mean by growth of an economy? It implies there is a production of goods and services in the economy, increase in production of goods. When there is a production of goods and services in the economy, what happens? The employment of, okay, in the economy increases because you need more resources, you need more labor. As a result, an increase in employment, what happens? The income earned by these people increases. When income increases, what happens? People tendency to spend, consumption increases. As a result, what happens? Demand increases. And when the demand is increasing but the supply doesn't match with it, what would be the consequence? Okay, that results in a rise in prices and that's the reason I happen to make it clear whenever the economy experiencing growth okay it is typically I mean it's bound to experience a phenomenon of inflation and I call that as a demand pull inflation so that's what this figure simply shows you so an economy experience growth experience inflation and if this inflation is not okay controlled within a given span of time that inflation is so dangerous that would have an adverse impact upon the growth of this economy so if you could observe the person from this particular from the left side to the right side inflation is growing but and the economy is becoming weak got it so inflation is a byproduct of or is a result of grow, okay, growth but if that inflation keeps on growing and is not in control that would really kill the prospects of growth of uh, any economy okay so now let's try to understand what's the impact of uh, inflation but before that let me also make it clear with respect to a uh, one more empirical observation made by arthur phillips what is very popularly called as phillips curve in the previous lecture when we discussed about national income growth i explained okun's law but here in this case, I am trying to establish the relation between inflation and unemployment rate. So this economist by name Arthur Phillips, he happened to make an empirical observation. So from a given set of economic, okay, economic data of various uh, European nations, uh, he made an observation. The observation of this person is whenever the inflation rate is high, whenever the inflation rate uh, is high, okay, uh, let's say take this point, whenever the inflation rate is uh, high in an economy, he made an uh, observation that the unemployment rates uh, in that particular economy are low. Whenever the inflation rates are low, if you look at this particular point, the unemployment rates in the, okay, the, unemployment rates in the economy are high. So, this okay, concept that been observed by this particular economist is very popular called as Phillips curve. Why is it so? So, this gentleman says inflation does mean rise in prices and that price rise is because of increase in demand and the demand is increasing because of consumption that is because of increase in the employment opportunities. So, because of more production employment is increasing and that is the reason whenever there is a high inflation does mean there is a more production okay prices rise does mean because of more demand. Why is the demand high? Because of more production and because of more production the employment rates are high as a result unemployment rates are low. Similarly, he says whenever there is a inflation rate, low inflation rate does mean okay, when inflation rate is low, he says that is because the demand in the economy is low. Why is the demand low? Because people's consumption is low. Why is it so? Because there is no enough production. The production or the economic activity is experiencing a contraction that might result in increase in unemployment rates and this observation made by this particular person is what we call as a Phillips curve. So, it establishes relation between inflation and unemployment rate whereas Okunsla established relation between okay uh, growth rate and unemployment so with every one person rise in unemployment in an economy what would be the impact upon growth rate is what Okunsla says got it now let's look at the impact of inflation and in economy generally okay whenever there is an inflation does mean price rise the same concept could be expressed as a phenomena wherein with rise in prices what happens to the value of money purchasing power of your money it keeps decreasing so it has been Okay, if you think okay, expressing or simply trying to understand the impact of inflation a little bit difficult, try to figure out what would be the impact on the economy when the value when the purchasing power of money decreases. It's as simple as that. Let's say today you go to market with 20 rupees and you could buy 1 kilo of onions. But tomorrow, imagine if you need rupees 40 to buy the same basket or same kilo of onions. So, don't you really think the onions in the market experiences a steep rise in price? Okay, there is a 100 percent rise in prices, there is a 100 percent inflation they call, okay, with respect to onions. At the same time, the same thing could also be expressed as a phenomena wherein you need 20, okay, your 20 rupees has a purchasing power of 1 kilo onions the previous day, but right now, okay, you need 40 rupees to buy the same kilo of onions. That means your, your money in your pocket has experienced a rapid erosion of uh, its purchasing power. So, I could simply define inflation is a phenomena is as simple as that is a phenomena wherein the money or the purchasing power of money 
keeps eroding because of uh, inflation. So, in both the cases, it means one and the same, isn't it? Uh, so, you need to forego more and more money to purchase the same basket of uh, goods and services. So, henceforth, let us try to understand the impact of inflation okay, from the dimension of uh, fall in purchasing power of money. So, when money purchasing power keeps on decreasing, what would be the impact? The poor suffer the most. Because generally, if you look at the daily wage labor and the most the poor people, around 90 to 95 percent of their daily wage happens to be spent on the necessities, roti, kapda, makan, isn't it? I mean, the very basic necessities. And if these particular goods ends up experiencing a rapid increase in prices, what happens? A large amount of their income goes for these basic necessities and they would hardly be left with any amount of money to meet other basic requirements and that is the reason people generally say inflation acts like a regressive tax. Inflation acts like a regressive tax or it would said to have a regressive effect or regressive impact upon the poor. The more poor you are, the more is the burden that you experience because majority of your income ends up going for meeting your basic necessities and you would be left with any penny to meet any other particular consumption requirements. Okay, not only the poor people, the people who happen to have a fixed income, I mean those people who does whose income does not change with the change in prices of goods and services or change in cost of living in the city or the any other part of the country. Okay, in such case, these people are said to experience the worst impact that is the inflation said to act like a regressive effect. That is mean more poor you are, more is the impact of inflation because of rapid erosion of purchasing power of your money. Okay, so that is the very common okay, impact of inflation. And as I as already said, the more poor you are, the more is the impact of uh, inflation. And now let us look at the impact of inflation upon the households of an economy, households. So what do you think is the impact of okay, inflation on households? Uh, generally people say the real income of the people decreases, real income decreases. Okay, what do you mean by real income decreases? So let me define the difference between nominal income and real income. So, nominal income refers to the money that you are receiving. Let us say you are working for a company and you are receiving some salary and that salary that is credited to your bank account regularly is what is called nominal income. Then what is real income? It is simply nominal income adjusted to inflation. So, remove the rate of inflation or adjust the nominal income okay, with the inflation rate, what you get is a real income. Let us say your nominal income is 1 lakh rupees. 1 lakh rupees. Then what is the real income? Real income is nothing but the basket of goods and services this 1 lakh could purchase. This 1 lakh could purchase is what I call real income. That is what I mean to say. Let us say today if you have 1 lakh rupees of income and at a very low rate of inflation if 1 lakh could purchase a wide basket of goods and services. But because of very high increase in inflation, let us say the rate of increase in prices of goods and services is by 100 percent. It does mean the next month for the same 1 lakh, you could only get a 50 percent of this basket because the economy has experienced a 100 percent rise in prices. So, now your 1 lakh rupees would have only purchasing power of half the size of the basket that it could purchase one month back, is not it? And that is what is the okay, meaning of real income, okay? what your money could buy okay, experiences a drastic fall. So, as a result of your real income decreases, what happens to the households? The overall Okay, the total consumption of the households decreases. So, it, it does mean the demand in the economy by these people decreases. When the demand incre decreases, you know what kind of impact would have upon the production in the economy. So, that is the reason I ended up said, okay, I already ended up saying that whenever the inflation is very high, that results in adverse effect upon the growth of an economy because people are not interested in producing goods and services. The reason none of the people are interested in purchasing more goods and services because of rapid erosion of value of money. Okay? So, now let us look at what kind of impact it would have upon the financial institutions. Generally, what happens? Not only real income of the people increases, uh, decreases, real interest rates decreases. Okay, during uh, inflation, real interest rates uh, decreases. So, what is the difference between again nominal interest rate and real interest rate? Real interest rate is nothing but nominal interest rate adjusted to inflation. I mean simply remove the component of inflation. Let us say if you happen to keep your money in a bank which promises 5 percent rate of interest, uh, but does mean your 100 rupees by the end of the year is going to give you, make, okay, give you 105 rupees. That means at 5 percent annual rate of interest, your 100 rupees deposit gets you 105 rupees at the end of the year. But at the same time, if the inflation rate is 10 percent, does mean, does mean the erosion of purchasing power of your money within one year goes down by 10 percent. I mean, whatever you could buy it for 100 rupees, 
okay a year later you need to forego 100 rupees to purchase the same basket in such case your money experiencing rapid erosion of value of purchasing power isn't it so it does mean your money in the bank okay is fetching you 5 percent rate of interest but the inflation rate is eroding your purchasing power so that's the basic reason if i remove the okay so let's say the nominal rate of interest is 5 percent and the rate of inflation is 10 percent so what is the real rate of interest minus 5 percent so at times of high inflation the real interest rates decreases when the real interest rates decreases people's willingness to save decreases when savings decreases what happens to investments i think you would be able to sense it and when it comes savings of the people or people are not interested in savings then you could understand the impact upon the financial institutions like banks and other okay uh, intermediaries similarly let's look at the impact of inflation upon the government of india when the inflation is high obviously when government expenses keeps uh, increasing because government need to compensate the employees by paying uh, more dearness allowance isn't it because people obviously expect because the cost of living is increasing but we would not be happy working for the same salary so government spending increases and since in government of india also happens to be consumer of large basket of goods and services even government's expenditure keeps uh, increasing the overall expenditure of the government uh, during inflation increases because the salaries it need to compensate the people at a higher level its expenditure levels increases sometimes the government also need to provide subsidies to the people to bring the price of goods and services at a reasonable rates so as a result of high inflation the expenditure of the government increases and as already discussed with high inflation since the demand decreases the revenue of the government might decrease the revenues of the government might decrease why will the revenue decreases because what is the major source of revenue to the government taxes when people are consuming less basket lesser and less amount of goods and services what happens to tax revenue of the government of india decreases because the overall consumption itself has decreased the overall revenue to the government of india decreases so as a result what happens when expenditure increases and revenue decreases the gap between expenditure and revenue that is what we call as a fiscal deficit increases so when the deficits are high what should be the impact what do you think is the thing government has to do it has to borrow more money borrowing might also might increase isn't it so that's how inflation not only would have an impact upon a common man like you and me even it would have an adverse impact upon the government too okay it would have an impact upon the producers of goods and services now let's look at imagine what kind of impact inflation would have upon the producers of goods and services so at high inflation at a higher rise in prices what happens the overall demand decreases when the demand decreases do you really think as an entrepreneur would like to produce more goods and services no production of goods and services decrease when your production of goods and services decreasing what happens to the unemployment rates it increases when unemployment rate increases what happens to the income of the people decreases when the income of the people decreases what happens to the overall demand of the economy it again reduces so that's how you end up falling in a cycle what we call as a vicious cycle so does mean your economy might end up experiencing a very bad impact so high inflation would kill the prospects of growth of an economy okay isn't it and if you cannot i mean if you are not in a position to bring down the inflation within the control that really results in your economy experiencing great contraction isn't it and when the economy experiences contraction fall in production rise in unemployment i guess you could understand the consequences isn't it okay now let's look at what kind of impact that inflation would have on exports and imports simply look at the impact of inflation now imagine in our economy because of demand pull inflation the prices are rising that means people of india are willing to pay better price for goods and services when the price of goods and services in india is increasing as an exporter would you like to sell goods in india or outside india we would like to sell more in india okay we would like to sell more and more goods in india because the prices of goods and services in india is increasing people are willing to pay more and more prices as a result of more sale of goods within india what happens to the exports of india decreases it's as simple as that now imagine for every 20 rupees okay an american could purchase one pencil from india but the same pencil in india experiences a rise in price from 20 to 40 okay don't you really think the number of pencils he gets for a dollar decreases is that true? isn't it because for every 80 rupees okay if 80 rupees is the price of a dollar for every 80 rupees he could buy four pencils but at 40 rupees per pencil for every 80 rupees he could only get two pencils so it does mean that americans purchasing pencil from india decreases and henceforth i could also simply end up concluding it that results in fall in exports 
Okay. And since there is a enough demand in the economy, there might also be an increase in the imports because since people of India are happy consuming more goods and services, that might result in increase in imports. So, the impact of inflation, what could be the impact of inflation? Exports might decrease and imports might rise. As a result, when exports are decreasing, what happens to, let's say, we are interacting with the world only in terms of dollars. What happens with the increase, okay, impact? Dollar supply decreases and because of increase in import, dollar demand increases. So, when the demand for dollar is increasing compared to the supply, what happens? The impact on rupee decreases. So, rupee depreciates. Rupee depreciates. So, when rupee depreciates, let us say, okay, imagine from 60 rupees for a dollar, if rupee expenses fall in value to 80 per dollar, what happens? Any product that you are purchasing in terms of dollars would experience a very Okay, huge amount of price rise, isn't it? So, it has been whatever you get it for a 60 rupees, whatever you could get it for 60 rupees, right now for every dollar you need to forego 80 rupees. That has been when rupee ends up depreciating, what happens to your import bill? Your import becomes uh, costly. When your import bill is costly, let us say oh, take the case of typical imports of India, we import oil, isn't it? Around 60 to 65 percent of our oil requirement is met through imports. We Indians also import coal, isn't it? So, we Indians import gold. So, large amount of goods and services we consume happens to be imported from abroad and when the rupee ends up depreciating, that would result in a huge increase in cost of imports. So, that increase in cost of imports, when, okay, when crude oil prices increase, what would be the impact on inflation again? The inflation further rises. So, inflation might sometimes drive the inflation. Understood? So, we have seen in this particular lecture the topic, okay, the concept of inflation, deflation, different terms related to inflation deflation, what causes the inflation, isn't it? And what's the impact of inflation on the economy? So, starting from the poor man to the middle class people to the producers of goods and services, I mean to the firms, financial institutions like banks, non-banking financial companies, including government of India, everyone would experience the heat of inflation. And that's what we have discussed in detail about how it would have an effect. And okay, going further, we also have seen what kind of inflation, okay, what kind of impact inflation would have an effect upon the trade. That's an exports and imports, and that fall in the imports and increase in export, bill, sorry, fall in export bill and increase in import bill results in rupee becoming weak. And when rupee becomes weak, our import bill becomes very costly. And when imports becomes too costly, that again might results drive us in the more inflation. Frankly speaking, right now the current inflation that we Indians are experiencing because of Russia Ukraine war, you know the fact because of the global crude oil prices rising and we ended up experiencing this rapid fall in value of rupee, isn't it? And as a result, we end up paying more and more amount of money for the goods and services we are consuming, isn't it? We are already experiencing the phenomena that is a rupee depreciation and resulting in an increase in inflation. So, this is what we have discussed and having seen inflation being so bad, okay, we need to keep the inflation within a control. Now, we will continue with the next session wherein we will be discussing okay, what are the various measures of inflation and how to control this inflation. Okay? So, that would be our next part of discussion with respect to inflation. Having seen the different terms related to inflation and what causes inflation, the impact of inflation on the economy. Okay? Uh, when I say impact of inflation on the economy, we have seen the impact of inflation upon the common man, the government, the producer of goods and services, financial institutions. So, as inflation seems to have very bad impact on the economy, it is our priority to control the inflation. And right now, you all know the fact that India is right now experiencing very high inflation. And this inflation is all because of the, okay, the weak rupee. I mean, one is because of weak rupee, the other is because of subsidiary shock inflation related to crude oil prices. So, we need to keep the inflation within a control. To keep the inflation within control, we need to have tools to measure the inflation. So, the next part of our discussion would be how to measure inflation or what are the various measures of inflation. Thank you.